chair of the uh, Board of Curators, Cheryl Walker, uh, and just join me. So we're. Um, Now, is it okay hey, if I stay on this line? Uh, could I ask the people on the telephone to identify themselves? Our organization and name? <coughs> Murray Williams, Kansas City Star. And Kavita Kumar from the Post Dispatch. Okay, we're pleased to have both of you with us. Uh, we have here for the press conference uh, President uh, Gary Forsey and uh, Cheryl Walker, Chair of the Board of Curators. And I believe uh, if we could start with the folks who are physically here in the room, let them ask a few questions, and then we'll follow up with folks on the, on the telephone. Gary, I guess I'll begin with you, Mark Slavitt with KRCG News. Gary, uh, you've extended your contract. Why did you accept that extension? Well, I thought it was an important um, statement to make to the university, um, you know, faculty, staff, students, and, and all of our constituents that uh, I'm committed not just for the short term, that a three-year uh, term may have applied, but, but for the long term, and I think that was an important uh, item to bring back up to the curators. I initiated a discussion with Chairperson Walker and uh, agreed that we would bring that forward as a statement of commitment. What's an, what is an advantage of having a five-year over a three-year as far as uh, making plans for the future? Well, I think there are a number of uh, <coughs> items that come into play. I mean, a strategic planning uh, process that we're undertaking uh, by definition. Uh, that typically is a three to five year uh, cycle. Uh, and, you know, if we would have thought more about that in uh, December, we probably could have had it uh, staged at, at a five year term at that stage. So I think this was really just a recognition that uh, uh, it's important to, to reflect a commitment and there are things that we will be undertaking that, uh, that will take longer. And I wanted to be sure that the university uh, constituents knew that I was committed to do that. Now I have a question for Cheryl. Cheryl, why did you offer the five? Why did the board offer a five-year over the three-year? What was your What was your reasoning behind that? Well, if, a couple of reasons. One, certainly, I hope you would agree with me that um, President Forsey's first 100 days have been outstanding in terms of the way that he has gotten in um, and analyzed the situation of the University of Missouri and also the steps that he's taken to advance the cause of the University of Missouri, and so. Um, when the issue was first raised with me, I was ecstatic about it, I'm quite thrilled to carry it forth to my fellow colleagues because we too feel that it sends the right signal. The strategic planning initiatives that he's undertaking that you um, probably heard him talk about today, um, by the time you know we're, we're already 100 days and next thing you know we'll be looking at almost a year down the belt and in terms of initiating and implementing the plan, as he mentioned, we're really looking at a three to five year process to make it effective. What do you like most about Gary? I like the way that he has gotten in on the ground and, and permeated every aspect of the system. Um, there were doubters at the beginning that, that wondered <coughs> his ability to interact with the students and I think those have um, certainly come to be believers. Um, his ability to understand the issues surrounding higher education I think are I, you know, from, from my perspective, it was just letting the rest of the, the universe understand the things that we had, had experienced and my experience with him serving on the Board of Trustees of um, Missouri S&T as well. And so I think um, his ability to grasp the issues, his leadership skills and moving us forward and his quick decision-making abilities are just a few of the many attributes that he has that is make me thrilled to have him seated next to me today. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Forsey, I'm Kristen Chambro with KBIA. Um, I just kind of wanted to get a general sense of how you feel about, you know, having an extension and a contract extension. Is this something that you had planned on seeing a future at uh, the University of Missouri, or has this come to you as a surprise? Well, as I interacted, as we've already said, with faculty and, and with alumni, um, you know, I, I uh, I felt like uh, you know a three-year time period uh, may not be enough to accomplish uh, you know the long-term goals that uh, that I would have in mind for the university and the long-term goals that the university uh, should have in mind for itself. So uh, I wanted to be sure that as we make decisions along the way, that those decisions by others observing how we go about that aren't being put through a lens that may be viewed me as being a short-term. Uh, president, so I wanted to take that uh, off the table. So that that was uh, how the discussion started. That that uh, 
you know, as we make decisions, someone, you know, could interpret those as being short term, and I wanted to be sure that that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. Um, and secondly, what kind of, uh, we, you approved the budget this year for the next year, what kind of changes uh, did you make from this year, from last year to this coming year's budget? Um, what kind of, why don't you, sorry, um, basically what kind of differences can we see in this coming budget that was just approved? Well, I think, as I said earlier this morning, it was important that uh, the governor uh, took a leadership stance on the budget and brought forward the second year of the uh, commitment that was made. Uh, three years ago for a 12.6 percent over three years. This was the second year of 4.2 percent budget increase that allows us to begin to uh, move back to the levels uh, from the 2002 time period. So that allows us to cover uh, inflationary costs which have increased including fuel costs and, and, and the infrastructure that, that requires additional support and also allows us to start to deal with one of the key priorities of faculty salaries and staff salaries. And and uh, as was approved this morning by the, uh, by the curators, the 2009 budget now uh, allows us to fund fully uh, the first of a three-year uh, path toward the $21 million that would uh, close that faculty salary gap. And we were able in our budget process to, uh, to uh, identify the $7 million uh, in total uh, and to have that as a key part of the budget. So I think that is a very important component. And the process uh, that we worked you know, with Jefferson City, uh, I think, bodes well because we started to change the discussion. We started to change the discussion to be accountable uh, for the funds that we're receiving, to report back to them on how we're using those funds. We talked about that in terms of transparency and a report card, if you will. But, and we also talked about changing the discussion that higher education has to be viewed as an investment, uh, not a line item of expense. And I think. I think the groundwork that we set for that will uh, serve us well as we begin to work with a new governor uh, and, and, generally speaking, new um, leadership in the House and in the Senate. Uh, today the board adopted an executive compensation uh, statement. Could you talk about sort of how is that going to be implemented? I, I see that sort of performance objectives are in your own contract. So how do you plan to implement that with your executive staff and then at what stage will you be doing that? Who is it going to go right to deans and your own executive vice presidents? Or how are you going to? Yeah, as I came on board in, um, and, and was announced in December, the uh, concept of a performance management system had been discussed uh, by the board and by the general officers and by interim president Lamb. And as I came on board, of course, my background uh, and familiarity with those type of systems uh, resonated. And so uh, uh, we announced, uh, you know, last night and this morning, my specific performance management objectives, which are now available uh, on, on the website that we referenced, but we also, with the policy that was adopted yesterday by, by the committee and, and, and adopted by the board this morning, uh, that clarifies and firms up language that makes it very clear that performance management as well as um, base salary will be an important part of the compensation uh, for the university system going forward. So that. The previous policy didn't, uh, didn't have that exact language. We believe the current language uh, will allow us to go forward and roll out over a period of time for uh, the chancellors and the general officers, uh, you know, similar to what I have. And, and uh, you know, we're going to use the first year uh, for, uh, for this process to be a trial year uh, for the chancellors and for the general officers because we want to be sure we have the right measures in place for the long term. Uh, but we'll have in place by the 1st of October uh, for my direct reports, meaning the chancellors and the general officers, uh, their own performance measures uh, that will be used in the first year, uh, not tied to compensation, but yet give us a test period to utilize uh, for the first year. So we'll start with the chancellors and your direct, those who report directly to you, and then go to who else? And then uh, we have the flexibility to uh, continue to roll this throughout the university. We'll make those decisions. Uh, after the trial period, uh, so we, we aren't, I'm not announcing today and, and uh, that the policy allows us to take this, uh, you know, throughout the university, but uh, the first year will be a trial period for the general officers. Well, what have you thought about sort of the, the funding capacity of the university for this, for the incentives? Uh, will base salaries stay the same? Where's the funding going to come from? Well, just as we've talked about uh, rank faculty salary, uh, our salaries for staff <coughs> and for the leadership of the university. Uh, aren't at market median, and so it's important to realize that uh, to the extent that we have funding opportunities either in the basic salary pool, the 4%, uh, 
uh, or other means to start to close that gap. That's, that's important for all of our university associates, faculty being one piece of that, staff being another piece, and, and the administrators being another piece of that. The performance management system ultimately will be part of the gap closing associated with that, not a piece on top of it, but it's important <coughs> to move to move our uh, organizations uh, to that market medium, and we're a far distance from that today. Um, Anna Keppel from the Man Eater at Carrot Emmy of the Student Newspaper. Um, I was wondering what the board's reaction was to um, the student curator vote bill passage in both chambers of the General Assembly um, since the board had just recently uh, taken a stance against it. Um, I guess I'll address that. Um, believe it or not, the board um, has did that was not part of our agenda for this meeting and um, really haven't discussed it as, as a group. Um, I can tell you something that I shared when this question was raised to me, so I'm speaking with uh, my own personal hat on, that um, you know you, you know my public position on it, so that's not a surprise to you. But from my perspective, I felt that it, you know to make a decision without considering alternatives at the same time, I felt was a bit ill-advised, quite frankly. And then secondly, I, it, at least it hasn't been explained to me at this point, why this was such an issue for the University of Missouri, but it wasn't impacted or it wasn't seemed to be an issue for the other um, state universities throughout the state. And in fact, I might point out that during the same legislative session, I don't have the bill number, but there was a bill that was passed with regard to um, Northwest University to specifically indicate that their student representative did not have a vote. So from my perspective, there were just a lot of questions that remained unanswered for me. Thank you. Can we take some questions from the telephone audience? Uh, yeah, I, I have a question, Maria Williams, Kansas City Star. Um, in terms of President Forsey's uh, contract on the extension to five years, I just I was curious, uh, with uh, President Forsey having been um, at the university um, but six months uh, since December, uh, this extension taking place to five years. How unusual is that um, for the Board of Curators to extend the President's contract after six months um, to this length? Um, I guess since this was my first presidential hire <laughs> while being on the board, I um, really am not qualified to speak to what standard, but I can, I can certainly tell you in my experience um, and being on the board, um, in other contexts of the university, it's not uncommon to have someone on board, see that they're doing an excellent job, and want to think of ways to um, retain them. Um, most often this comes up in the context, unfortunately, of our sports um, um, leaders, be it um, athletic directors or coaches and things of that nature. But um, from my perspective, a president of the university, it's equally as important to make sure that we maintain and um, continue to move forward. The other thing that I would point out um, in doing that, just to make for a point of clarification, is that in addition to the extension of the contract, what we also did was extended um, the payment or the vesting period and hence payment of his deferred compensation. So. So it wasn't a scenario where that would continue to be three years and then the, um, the contract itself would be five. So it was a, a, a certainly a commitment on both of our parts in that regard. So I, I guess in the follow-up with that, and you were just touching on that, this extension, how does that impact um, the president's salary? Uh, there, was, there were no changes to the contract as it related to salary. Um, the deferred compensation component of it, you might recall, was $100,000, of which um, it was tied to performance measures that, um, as uh, President Forsey mentioned, are on, available on the website for your review. So that deferred compensation and the percentages of it that's available to him is a maximum of $100,000 a year. But again, he would have to stay for the entire five years in order to get a dollar of it. Maria, I think uh, just to, to mention as well, uh, I work at the will of the Board of Curators, so I'm, I'm not working uh, where there's a uh, fallback or contract position that would uh, 
uh, again, put any burden on the board or the university uh, if, if the board decided that they uh, weren't satisfied with my performance. Uh, so there's not a burden that, uh, that this changes in that regard either. And a follow-up question. This is Kavita from the Post-Dispatch. Uh, I'm sorry, I think you might have said it, but I missed it, um, President Forsey. Did you say that uh, you were the one who approached the board about extending the contract because you had heard from faculty and staff that, you know, there was some concern that you were, weren't going to be around very long? Was that is that right? Well, I, 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 I did approach uh, uh, Chairperson Walker in this regard, and, and uh, it wasn't uh, that I was hearing this from the faculty and staff, but it became clear to me that the plans that would be developed and plans we would be required, uh, some of those plans, uh, if, if they took three to five years to develop and roll out, uh, if I was only going to be committing for three years, then, you know, we're almost at the point of needing to start another presidential search. So that, uh, that again, didn't seem to, uh, to make sense. So I initiated the discussion to be sure that it was clear that I was uh, willing to commit to the university for a longer period of time. And this was voted on in yesterday's closed meeting, is that right? Say that again, I'm sorry. I, didn't I said, was this approved at yesterday's clo oh, during yes. uh, yesterday's closed meeting? Yes. Okay. And if I can change uh, the subject a little bit, uh, President Forsey, um, I was wondering if you could comment on the preliminary findings of the systems review of KWMU's finances and management. If you could speak to what some of the issues that have been flagged, and it, was it just managerial issues, or were there some financial issues, too, that the public should know about? Um, if you yeah, I, I will that. make a comment. Um, you know, the decision to uh, terminate the employment of uh, Patty Wente was made by Chancellor Tom George. Uh, I was fully apprised of the situation, uh, was uh, aware of the details of the investigation, and fully support the uh, Chancellor's decision to do what was obviously, in this case, the best interest of the University of Missouri St. Louis campus and all of our supporters. Uh, Ms. Wente was terminated by the Chancellor because uh, she had lost the confidence of the Chancellor in uh, her ability to lead the radio station. As this is a, a personnel matter, I won't comment any further on the details of the uh, specifics of the investigation, but I think our statements in this regard have been very clear. Well, can you say anything more? I mean, you know, this uh, station obviously gets some taxpayer dollars, and there are many people who donate their money um, in good faith to the radio station. So, I mean, shouldn't there be a little bit some public accounting if there were some financial mismanagement issues that were raised, uh, that had been raised by the review? Uh, I've, I've uh, again, indicated that as this was a personnel matter, uh, our investigation uh, has indicated that uh, we had lost confidence in her ability to lead the station, and, uh, and that is our statement. Okay. I have a, Ray Williams can't see, so I have another question, and it goes into a different direction as well, um, or actually back to the um, compensation. Um, the the university was able to find um, dollars to make up the the money that the state was unable to contribute to the rank faculty um, competitive salary um, boost that uh, you guys wanted to give. Now, how are you going to do that again next year? What it, I mean, how can you guarantee, or can you even guarantee um, that this money um, will continue, or is this just going to be a one shot deal? Uh, let me be, be clear. When we identified $7 million, uh, we had you know, planned in our original budget for 3.5 or 3.55 precisely, uh, and we had uh, asked for the state to identify uh, as part of their core budget recommendation an additional 3.55 when uh, it became clear in the last couple months that that might be a challenge for the state to do that. We began uh, assessing our priorities and concluded this was our top priority. And if we found uh, in our own budget uh, deliberations and processes and working with the campuses the way, the way to fund that additional amount, then we should take on that challenge. We were able to do that. Uh, and so the $7 million is recurring. Uh, that had to be identified, and we had to have confidence in our budget process uh, that, in fact, that amount would be recurring into the future. Uh, we don't have confidence that we could go back into next year's budget and uh, find the additional amount from the state to offset what we will again be asking them for uh, for a state appropriation. So we found that additional incremental three and a half uh, that is sustaining into the future. 
Uh, it remains to be seen. Uh, we'll be asking for the state in our core budget uh, request for next year for them to uh, fund not only the second year of this $21 million approach, but also to make up for the first year uh, that, uh, that they were not able to fund. Uh, but uh, it would remain to be seen whether the university, with its own resources, would be able to uh, uh, find that additional $3.5 million uh, for the second year. So I hope that's clear. In other words, $7 million uh, is recurring. We've identified that, and there is no risk that, uh, that we would get to next year and, and have to pull that back. That would, uh, we would not budget uh, in that fashion, obviously. Let's take uh, two more questions, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, Gary, you talked about making headway, headway with the General Assembly. Uh, this one issue is something that's very important to the faculty compensation, and the General Assembly didn't grant it this past year. What, are you, what is your uh, assessment of their ability or their willingness to fund that uh, faculty compensation as well as funding other programs that are in the FY10 budget, such as preparing to care and facility maintenance? Well, I, I think the uh, identification of the 4.2 percent uh, and the three-year plan for that uh, was very important, and that, that is important in the context of the uh, overall funding for higher education in the past uh, eight years. So. The fact that we were able to see that through in the second year, I think, is a very important uh, part of that process. And, and as you heard this morning, we were able to deal with the UMSL equity adjustment, which was an incremental uh, component to that. You know, the state revenue uh, uh, picture for 2009 uh, will be a determining factor about will there be room in the state budget for additional funding support for the uh, University of Missouri or any other four-year public institutions that are trying to identify incremental uh, approaches to the budget. So. It remains to be seen. I think we have to continue to do a, a great job as we did this year as we identified preparing to care being a new initiative uh, and that had broad based statewide support but at the end of the day there wasn't incremental funding available and I think it, it just suggests that incremental funds uh, because of the state's revenue picture will have to be uh, you know ever vigilant about creating a great case for that and then hopefully those dollars will compete with other state priorities. But. Uh, as we know already, the 2009 budget picture, because of the revenue pictures nationally, uh, may be a challenge for us. So 4.2 percent, we'll have to work hard, I'm sure, to be able to continue to uh, have that as part of our budget assumption as well. Some will argue that there, there was incremental uh, funding that could have been used for preparing to care that went to the Access Missouri scholarships instead. Uh, what willingness do you think that the legislature will have next year to, to uh, fund preparing to care yeah and we'll be we'll be back at it uh, this year trying to uh, uh, make that case so we haven't made that final budget determination but in the uh, preliminary budget that we shared with the uh, board of curators yesterday preparing to care was uh, an initiative and certainly uh, ensuring that that broad-based support is there that the needs for those uh, positions are as apparent uh, next year as they were last year in terms of filling those critical staffing needs around the state uh, we think this is uh, the role of the university to uh, reach out and provide that teaching uh, for those positions that ultimately can serve the state's needs in those critical areas. So we'll have to uh, make that case and, and, uh, and do that with uh, the same amount of vigor that we did this year. doesn't guarantee funding at the end of the day, but uh, we will make the case. Okay, if that was a follow-up, we could take one more, but that will do it. Are we done? Okay, go ahead. You, you, you mentioned a, a retreat that you're going to have with the curators in mid-June. Could you give some more specifics about what you plan to uh, achieve there? And is this something that's it's new or different? Well, I, I don't think it's uh, new that uh, the university would uh, you know, have some type of a strategic planning initiative. Uh, I think with me coming on board, it gives us a chance to uh, level set with the general officers. It's not with the curators. It's with the general officers. And, and to be sure that uh, we're all uh, have a common point of view about what the campus specific issues are that are unique to each campus uh, at the same time uh, what are the initiatives that can be best handled at the system level so that we get the efficiencies the the scale of uh, benefit for for that uh, kind of activity so we uh, will have a very uh, active uh, couple of days together that will include uh, uh, understanding some national uh, issues as I indicated this morning uh, we'll be sure that we have a complete understanding of the, of the state of Missouri demographics and economic 
uh, picture for the next five years, and we'll follow that up the next day with the uh, confirmation of where we are with our strategic planning initiatives. And I've also been using the term centers of excellence to identify, uh, as you heard this morning, each campus uh, either directly or indirectly uh, happen to identify which areas that they are standouts uh, in the country for their peer uh, institution comparatives. And I think that's a very important uh, mindset to have as well. Thank you very all for joining. Thank you for joining. <laughs>